Now remember what we're doing. We're going to follow Cardano in chapter 11 of Ars Magna, in which he first addresses just the depressed cubic, this sort of restricted sort, x cubed plus mx is n. Now, rather than do that general cubic with an m and an n in it, how about, just to make things a little easier, I will put specific numbers in those slots. So instead of x cubed plus mx equals n, how about, we'll pick this one, x cubed plus 24x equals 56. It's not going to be quite the generic general solution, but all the steps I do here can be replicated with m's and n's. It just makes it even more complicated looking. So I think this one with the numbers in will make it a, a much more accessible kind of derivation. So we're going to go after just that one, x cubed plus 24x equals 56. Now this is a cubic equation. And so Cardano, interestingly, begins with a cube an actual three-dimensional cube. Remember when we saw al Khwarizmi solving a second-degree equation, he completed the square. And he was looking at a two-dimensional square. Well, you go up to a third-degree equation, you go up a dimension. And so Cardano's looking at a literal cube. And let's say it's t by t by t. So I've drawn a picture there of a cube, t units high, t units across, t units deep. The volume of this is what we're going to try to track down. Well, the volume of a t by t by t cubed is obviously just t cubed. So that's, that's easy enough. Well, Cardano has to do something more sophisticated than that, and he sure does when he subdivides the cube in a kind of interesting and it turns out to be very valuable fashion. So, Here's a picture of my subdivided cube. What I'm doing is slicing this cube up into various pieces. It's the same cube, but it's now been broken up into the pieces you see. Now, the cube is still t units high, t units across the bottom, t units deep. That's, that's the same cube. But you see down in the lower front corner, there's a little piece there, it's shaded. That's a little cube that's u units by u units by u units. And we're going to have to worry about what the t and the u are. We'll get to that in a bit. But let's just suppose that that little cube down there is u by u by u. Now, if the whole base of the cube is t units, and I put that little chunk there that's u, that means the other piece, which is labeled a, b in the diagram, would have to be t minus u units. And likewise, going back on the right side, if I have a little chunk of u units, the remainder of that, which is labeled d, e, is t minus u units. So these are the dimensions of this subdivision of this cube. Now, what Cardano has to do is find the volume of the cube again by adding up all the little pieces into which it has been broken. So we're going to go after the volume of the cube once more, but this time by collecting all the little blocks and pieces you see before you. So you have to do this methodically. Here we go. First of all, let me get that little cube in the lower front corner. What's its volume? Well, it's u by u by u, so that's u cubed. Let me next get that big shaded cube in the upper back corner. You can see it there. It's a little darker. We're going to get its volume. Now let's see. It's t minus u one way by t minus u the other way by t minus u in the third dimension. So it's a cube whose volume is t minus u, the quantity cube. All right, what else do we have here? Look at the front. Right here, facing front, there's this slab standing there. Along, the base is a, b. The height is the whole height of the cube, and it's u units thick. It's facing us on the front. It's this big slab. Its volume would be t minus u times t times u, the product of the three dimensions. So let me put it in the form t u times t minus u. So that's the front facing slab. But there's another slab on the right side that is exactly the same dimensions. You see it, it goes along the base d e. It rises all the way to the top, so it's t minus u by t and u thickness. I'm going to add that volume in. That's exactly what I just did, so I'm going to get another t u times t minus u. Let's just put a 2 there and make, write this as 2 t u times t minus u. But I'm still not done. There's still some pieces left. Now, where are they? Look, look in the front here. There's that little shaded cube in the lower 
front corner. Standing on top of it is a, is a block. I don't have that yet. Now its dimensions are u by u by t minus u, so its volume is u squared times t minus u. And there's one more piece. If you look at that shaded cube in the upper back, it's resting upon a pedestal there, below it. I need that volume, and if you look at the dimensions there, it's t minus u by t minus u by u, so the volume there would be u times t minus u squared. And I think I've collected all the pieces now. There they are. Well, now what we want to do is do a little algebra on this. Here's what I'll do. I'll write down the, the u cubed that started it and the t minus u cubed. Leave those alone. But the next three terms, the 2tu times t minus u plus the u squared times t minus u plus the u times the t minus u squared, notice each of those has in it the t minus u expression. It's common to all three of those last terms. So let me factor out t minus u from those three. When I do that, the first term will, will remain a 2tu, two, a two which I'll put in the square brackets. When I pull the t minus u out of the second term, I'll be left with a u squared in the square brackets. And when I pull a t minus u out of the third term, I'm left with a u times t minus u. And so this expression on the screen is the volume of the cube. But we also know the volume of the cube, quite simply, is t cubed. And so I'll set those equal. We've done the volume of the cube both as one big cube and as all these little pieces. Now, for some reason, this is going to get us somewhere. It's still not at all clear where this is going. There's the equation. u cubed plus t minus u, the quantity cubed, plus the quantity t minus u, square bracket, 2tu plus u squared, plus u times paren t minus u is t cubed. What are we going to do with this? Here's what we'll do. On the right side is that t cubed. On the left side, it starts off with a u cubed. Let me move the u cubed over to the other side. So the u cubed goes to the right, and now on the right I have t cubed minus u cubed. In terms of what's left on the left side, it starts with that t minus u cubed. And then there's this next expression. But look in the square brackets there. I see in the midst of that u times t minus u. Let me multiply that out. So that'll give me, I'll have plus t minus u times square bracket, the 2tu, plus the u squared, plus another tu when the u hits the t, and then minus a u squared when the u hits the minus u. Well, that seems to cry out for something to be done in those square brackets. I have a u squared, I have a minus u squared, they cancel. And now we're getting things a little simpler. Because inside the square brackets, there's a 2tu plus a tu. Well, that's 3tu, and that's all that's there. And so I'm finally reaching a point where I can take a deep breath here. Let me clean this up and say that what I've got then is the t minus u cubed, the first expression, plus the square bracket term, 3tu times its multiplier, t minus u, is equal to, on the right side, t cubed minus u cubed. That's important. I'm going to call that star. I want to refer to that in a minute. All right, so what? What is the point of all this? Well, here's the critical thing. This is the sort of thing that Cardano would have seen. That has the structure of the equation we're trying to solve. Remember, we're trying to solve x cubed plus 24x is 56. Something cubed plus 24 times the something equals 56. If you look at equation star, you see a mirror image of that. If I were to let t minus u be x. So in the equation star, take out the t minus u, put in the x, and star will become x cubed plus 3tu times x equals t cubed minus u cubed. It has that same flavor as a depressed cubic. But the cubic we really wanted was x cubed plus 24x is 56. That's what we're trying to solve. And now I look at these two depressed cubics. They both have an x cubed in them. In one case, I have 3tu times x. Below, I have 24 times x. On the right, I have t cubed minus u cubed in general, but the 56 in the specific case, that suggests I should equate these. Let the coefficient 3tu be 24. Let t cubed minus u cubed be 56.